In this video, I'm at Visha Classic in Buren in the Netherlands. It's the collection that was built up over the years by a Citroen dealer and importer, but it has grown to encompass a great many cars, mostly French. And I think it's gonna be rather spectacular to see. Just through that door over there is a Citroen BX specialist that uh, we are gonna see in a separate video. But uh, yeah. This is just delightful. Look, there's even got a Peugeot 106 down there. So let's go and have an explore, have a closer look at these fantastic cars. So this collection has only opened to the public fairly recently, but it was built up by Henk Vischer over uh, a number of years. And his personal collection ended up totaling over 80 cars. There's still building work going on, but there is separately a collection of 205s and 309s that normally fought part of the collection. I don't think we're gonna see many today but this is celebrating the work of Carol Suling who did a lot of artwork for Citroen here in the Netherlands so these are some of the adverts over the years as well wonderful to see but as you can see it's a mighty array of cars we've got Panars we've got Citroens and uh, ranging from Traction Avant over here the first front wheel drive Citroen we've got DS's variously as well, and a CX. I've got a DS convertible, I think a Chaperon. There are a number of um, copycats these days. Very, very beautiful. Uh, Panard, I think this is a, a CT, the shorter wheelbase, so similar to the one I drove last year. Uh, the CX is a turbo, and you can tell because this is a flattened T on the bonnet bulge and even the wheels have that repeated T motif. A very, very quick car. Uh, Citroen SM exclusive, top of the range. Phase two, Citroen C6. I think we know someone with one of those. Uh, this is earlier Panar PL17. It's also got, still got the wacky windscreen wipers of his uh, later 24 CT. But uh, this is a four door saloon. It is said that Panard wanted to develop the 24 CT into a four door, but were not allowed by Citroen. This is a Tigre. So this is the, um, the higher performance output version. I've uh, got a Citroen Mahari with its ABS plastic bodywork, not fiberglass. Uh, Citroen Xantia, uh, which replaced the BX, of course. Uh, that's a Sport one of these next door as well so a huge pair of um, carburettors uh, so it's the first performance bx bit of a collector's item gs palace and that's your top spec gs and the flat four engine and uh, my personal favorite i think the ami 6 i've just noticed what's next to it and that's quite exciting as well so my favorite feature of the ami 6 reverse rake window beautiful but next to it is an m35 uh, a remarkable prototype uh, citroen built a number of them this is number 470 apparently it has a single rotor vankel engine it has hydro pneumatic suspension but yet is still built on the same sort of 2cv developed platform as the me6 so an extraordinary car and there are a huge number of survivors here in the uk unique fastback styling. Uh, they were, I think, leased to um, trusted Citroen customers for testing, but with the oil crisis, Citroen uh, decided it was a really bad idea. They canceled this, they canceled the GS by rotor and uh, tried to buy back all the cars and scrap them. But thankfully, a number such as this one have survived. Uh, Citroen H-Van or Hybus, as they're sometimes called here. The Dutch ones, had a uh, forward hinged doors, uh, reversed hinged on every other market, which is why they look a little clumsy. Much earlier Citroen there, but I wish I could tell you about it. I'm not very good on the pre-war Citroens, but this is what got the company started. Is it a C4? It might be a C4, the original use of that name. And some nice wipers to look at on this one over here. Oh, this is a Citroen B12. Oh, it is a C4 from 1932. I've just noticed little stickers. We've got another C6. We've got a Citroen C3 Plurial. 
Uh, that's a great thing to see in a museum. I'm not their biggest fan, yet I'm pleased to see one here. And we've got a Citroen Dan, uh, which was developed by the uh, Panard um, engineers and designers who uh, were out of a job somewhat when Panard was killed off by Citroen. So this is Panard's take on what a 2CV could be like to improve it. Yet the 2CV outlasted it by seven years. This must be a Spanish one because it's got winding front windows and sliding rears unless it's been upgraded. So in Spain, yeah, I think that's another clue, but it's got a twist instead of a push button um, tailgate hinge uh, uh, lever. So yeah, I think that's a Spanish one. Boring geekery. 1978 for this one, what a good year. Uh, Citroen Visa Decouvrable. And uh, one of very few four door convertibles in the modern era. Quite smart. Uh, Another 2CV, what year is this one? 1987, so towards the end of the production, uh, it's got chrome headlamp shells, but I don't think would have been standard. Uh, 87 was a changeover year between um, Paris and uh, Portuguese production. Uh, let's just have a look at the door hinges, if we can see them. See what color they are. It's got black hinges, so I'm tempted to say that's a French one. And it's got glass secret. Uh, the Saint Gobain glass, so I think that is one of the last French built ones. Peugeot 403 Familial, three rows of seats and no booth space whatsoever, but it's just the middle ones are the occasional seats. And you've got like a sofa in the back here. You can see, very, very plush. A beautiful rare car, 403 Saloon, also very, very pretty. Column gear change, very, very robust cars. This is a 203 that came before the 403. Magnificent cars as well. Let's spin you around so you can see the fronts. 205 GTI, of course. Uh, this one is the full fat 1.9. Look at that, 203, beautiful. And we've got a 203 Familial, again with a folding middle seats. So fold them away and have loads of legroom. And we've also got the 203 represented in pickup form. And uh, moving forward, we've got uh, 203s and four, no, sorry, 202s and 402s. And this looks like the smaller 202, I think. Yep, from 1948, very much inspired by the Chrysler Airflow. Pair of headlamps hidden behind the grill, rendering them pretty much useless. And uh, it's interesting, it's got two CV. Uh, indicators, actually the reverse light lenses. And I think this is the same, a 202 pickup, I think. Yep, there's a clue, subtle as it is. But they did a larger 402 as well. Do we know anyone who owns an SM? I think we do. And it's fitting because the Maserati V6 engine in uh, the Citroen SM, this has got the V8 version because that V6 was developed from Maserati's V8. This um, has it midships. This is a Maserati Bora. There's a slightly smaller, similar looking Merak, which doesn't have the glass panels on the back. And that used the same V6 as the Citroen SM. So good to see. We've got a 403 convertible, very, very um, Colombo, albeit, um, his didn't look quite that tidy. And my second um, 203 Cabriolet of the weekend. <laughs> Crazy times. Over here, gorgeous, immaculate um, 106 Roland Garros. So it's a similar shade to the 106 I've got back home, but with these sort of half leather seats to celebrate the Roland Garros tennis tournament. A 206 behind that and a 306 behind that. And quite naturally, a 406 behind that. Uh, the 306 and 406, both facelift examples. We've got a Peugeot 1 U7 here with its um, sliding doors. We did a road test on one of those and played with those doors an awful lot. So you can see that on the video. Peugeot 604, bit of a white elephant, really. But uh, glorious cars nonetheless. 504 Coupe. Uh, 
505 don't replace it next to a 504 saloon i love 504 saloon very french very lovely peugeot 405 le mans apparently and uh, we've also got a 404 pininfarina cabriolet very very pretty a 404 station wagon next to it another familial with three rows of seats all suitcases on the roof because there's not much space inside the car a 305 gtx i think that had the 1.9 carb engine i think i drove the estate version a few years ago that's nice 404 saloon a wonderful hardy vehicles a 304 a slightly smaller take uh, next to the 204 that preceded it a 205 accent that's quite nice a bit lowly spec it's just the back of the 106 lovely color now this is the larger 402 and the sort of coupe with sliding roof oh my gosh look at that dashboard i think that may be a kotal pre-select gearbox uh, some of them had that so you've got this tiny little gear lever and it electronically selects the gears but i don't think i've ever seen a 402 coupe look split windscreens separate windscreen wiper for each and the 402 saloon also with a windscreen propped open i thought they had a one-piece screen but maybe that's just the 202 wonderful We've got some very french music playing now as well very plush in there that's got a standard dashboard gear lever and we shouldn't ignore the little 104 here a um, hugely important car for peugeot their entry into the super mini world although the very early ones did not have a tailgate they just had a tiny little opening flat boot but this ultimately became tall that samba the citroen ln and lna so an important little car often cruelly overlooked and they've got a little uh, brasserie la bombe here got some motorbikes uh, if those are your thing and uh, here's an, an even older peugeot 401 so they really did begin at 01 before they moved up a bit more and we've got yet more model cars wow so much to see um we'll get there in a minute don't worry but we're first of all going to take in this um opal ascona i2000 very racy and we've got another 404 and a, a rally version east african safari uh, it's a replica of the cars they would have used i think I don't think it's one of the genuine ones. It's an Oliver Opal Cadet. Nice. Another 504 Coupe, 406 Coupe, and uh, the RZ. I think is it RZ? I think so, with its double bubble roof. Look, 407 Coupe in um, a collection. Great to see, even though the 407 Coupe just does not have the grace of the 406. Still Pininfarina. So, uh, yeah, that's celebrated. And here is a Talbot Samba. So there we go. That's the Peugeot 104, but Talbotized to look like its brethren, like the Horizon here. That's a 1.3. And then we've got the Chrysler Alpine, the early one, with a sloping front end. Lovely cars. And a Solara, the, the uh, facelifted uh, saloon version of same. And then... <laughs> My third one of these of the weekend. This is a Chrysler. Um, although, could this be the full fat two liter? It is. So I've now seen the full range, all, all the same body, uh, 1.6, 1.8 and two liter. And now I've seen all of them in one weekend. That's, that's the sort of weekend I'm having. It's just insane. So it's all a bit cramped in here at the moment because they're starting work on hall three and developing that to get even more cars in. But we've got the cadet lineup here. So there's the, uh, Mark 1 Astra GTE to us, but that's a Cadet C, I think. I could be wrong. An Opel Manta GT, fairly lowly spec, I think. There's the earlier Cadet. Um, the thing is, the Opel Cadet name goes back a long time. It's pretty coupe Cadet uh, saloon version. My friend Trigger used to own one of those. I think it dates back all the way to the 1930s, the cadet name. I could be wrong. Yeah. 
I don't even know what that is. Is that an, yeah, it is opal. <laughs> very, very um, hard to read. And uh, next to that, uh, an opal Olympian. Uh, behind that, the f that might be the first use of the opal record name. Um, a Commodore behind that, I think. Look, I find out. And then, oh, one of my favorites, the Opal GT. Fantastic baby Corvette. Oh no, it's still a record, it's a 1900. There we go. And uh, a Skona. This is uh, their version of the Mark I Cavalier to us. Oh no, this is lovely. This is a Simca 1100 van. And it's got garage Vicia. If, if it's one of their original service vehicles, that would be lovely. Vicia Classic there. Uh, that's a really nice, very, very rare to see. Uh, Simca 1000 Rally 1 and Rally 2 performance versions of the uh, rear engine Simca 1000. In fact, let's try something. If you scan the screen, can you get that code to pick up the website for this place? I imagine you can. Next to the thousands, we've got the very, very pretty Bertone Coupe versions. Uh, I think this one might be a thousand and that one a 1200. Look, it's got extra grills for more grr. Uh, we just come and have a nose at this lovely Volvo recovery truck for a moment. Always love these. Yeah. Split windscreens. We can see the um, pretty back end of these sinkers. And I was actually right. 1000 uh, 1200 S here. And that's an earlier 1000 with the uh, different rear lights. More of the Opal GT there. And then we've got the Simca 1100, which was you know, one of those first pioneering super minis transverse engine and uh, a hatchback here. Quite unusual styling. This is a later one, that's the earlier style. But yeah, great to see. Matra Rancho, of course. And uh, they actually flipped the rear wiper for the different markets. That's a left-hand drive one. We've been recently refurbishing this one, I believe. And believe it or not, that is the same vehicle effectively as that van on the end, but it's rather the pickup version with this glass fiber pod um, glued to the back by Matra to create the Matra Rancho. Uh, Simca 1501 is the first facelift of the 1500, I think. Uh, that's an early one next to it. And the, the estates um, famously have a built-in picnic table, and uh, which is the boot floor. And also the rear window winds down into the tailgate, like an American station wagon. So that's lovely. Look at this um, Opal Record uh, Carlton to us in the UK. Uh, that's a beautiful van. This is a Packard motor, apparently. I don't know what it's out of, but it's quite big. Another recovery truck with sleep on the back of it. Go to sleep. Let's explore a bit of Simca history. Uh, this is a Simca, even though it looks like a Fiat Topolino. Uh, Simca sank, I think they were sold as. And it is the 500 built by Simca in France because import duties made it um, not very appealing to export cars from Italy. It was better to have them built under license. So we'll ignore the sports car for just a moment because we've also got Simca's around here in pretty pillarless coupe form. Their first monocoque construction car, still independent at this point, and they're sort of developed by themselves so there isn't any Fiat in it. But the car next to it, the Simca Ariane, is uh, actually almost a cast off Ford design, which is why it looks so very, very like a Mark I console. Uh, it's actually a, a re-engined Vedette. The Vedette had a side valve Ford engine because Ford abandoned their operations in Poissy in France uh, after the Second World War and Simca just simply bought them up. And the uh, Ariane is a Vedette, but with the same engine as the little Aronde next to it. So, interesting mixture of Fiat and Ford in those early days of Simca. Uh, but here we have Matra's first sports car, I think, where, where they simply bought uh, the Jet, D-J-E-T, uh, which had been built 
using Renault running gear here in the mid. So taking the rear engine mechanicals and repackaging them into this very, very pretty car. And uh, Matra, which was already existing as a sort of industrial conglomerate, um, entered sports cars that way. And after that came the M530, very pretty. It's my second one of these at the weekend. Mid-mounted Ford V4. And uh, then moving on quite a bit to the Bagheera, which has three seats, mid-mounted Simca engine. And very intriguing styling. 1.4 Simca engine in the Bagheera. And that was replaced by the Morena, which was the last Matra. Um, the production was cleared out so Matra could build the Renault Espace instead and end its relationship with Chrysler, which by that point owned, well actually I think it had even sold it onto Peugeot by that stage, but that's where the engine 2.2 litre or a 1.6 came from. And then we've got another traction of art to finish. So yeah, what a remarkable collection here in Buren in the Netherlands, which is a very pretty, very touristy town, well worth a look. So uh, thank you very much for following along. I'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.